Hello and welcome to J-Pod. This is a podcast on journalists and journalism. My name is Krishna Prasad and it's great to see you here. In the manner in which the mythology of contemporary Indian media is constructed, it would appear that concepts like reader-friendly journalism and marketing and uh, brand innovation were alien in our journalism till Samir Jain in the Times of India arrived on the scene in the mid-1980s. It's only then we are told that Indian media houses began to keep the reader at the front and center of the universe. It's only then that newspapers began to lower their cover price so that they would be more attractive to readers. It's only then we are told that newspapers began to be cheaply and aggressively sold like soap and toothpaste. And it's only then that attractive schemes were evolved by managers plucked straight out of FMCG companies to entice readers and advertisers. Somewhere in all of this is the suggestion that only a man born in great privilege who could unsentimentally look at media as a business would have the audacity to think out of the box like this. These are claims that would be true only if you have not heard of a man called Subramaniam Srinivasan, also known as S.S. Vasan. Vasan was the ambitious young man who, in his early 20s, bravely ventured to buy out a monthly magazine from its owner who had grown tired of the pressure of running it. The year was 1928. Vasan paid 200 rupees for the magazine. He quickly turned the struggling monthly into a weekly. He cut the cover price from 16 anas to 8 anas to attract more readers. You could argue that this is the earliest use of an invitation price in Indian journalism. Vasan introduced a referral scheme for readers to spread the word about the magazine so that they could get more readers into the magazine. You could read this as an early sign of the use of a social network. Vasan started a short story competition to get reader contributions. You could call it user-generated content. He introduced a crossword competition with 250 prizes to be given away each week. You could see this as reader engagement. Only the name of the winner of the crossword was printed each week. The other 249 names were published in a new magazine he launched alongside. Today's managers would call that a new vertical. And Vasan, of course, was the man who introduced advertising on credit so that advertisers could pay after the advertisement had evoked what is now called response. In other words, SS Vasan preceded the Samir Jains of the world by a good 60 years. And the magazine which pioneered all these tactics and techniques is the Tamil magazine Ananda Vigadan. Ananda Vigadan is now 94 years old. Vasan's son, S. Balasubramanian, launched Junior Vigadan to cover news and current affairs. And his son, which is Vasan's grandson, B. Srinivasan, has launched a slew of offerings from automotive to personal finance to agriculture, and he's also branched into several other verticals. Ananda Vigadan is the number one Tamil magazine in circulation and readership. Its entertainment shows on TV reach over a million homes each day. It has a number of YouTube channels. And today, as coronavirus provides a brutal reality check to media houses which provided digital content for free, here is the news. Ananda Vigadan was among the earliest Indian publishing houses to charge for its online offerings. In this episode of J-Pod, Ananda Vigadan's Srinivasan throws light on how the group is coping with the challenges thrown up by the virus both to the business and to journalism. Mr. Srinivasan, good morning. Beautiful to talk to you and, uh, you know, talking to you in a very strange time. Uh, <laughs> how, how has it been so far for you and for your group? Yes, good morning, KP. It's, uh, you might recall that uh, I had reached out to you in Jan. And I said, yes. we have just in our uh, completed our uh, open office. It's a brand new infrastructure that we had built. It has been our dream project for the last uh, five years and three years we've been actively constructing. 
and we were all set to open this in March. And oh, yes. uh, in fact, uh, the last uh, the last but one Saturday of March, if I'm not mistaken, it was March 16th or March 23rd, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I, I recall uh, that I had asked you to block your date among yes. others who I had wanted to invite for this uh, grand opening, right? Yes. So, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you that's... really want to know how things are going? <laughs> well, clearly, I mean, uh, three years back when we started building this office, five years back when we started our journey into the current, um, you know, the, 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 the transformation journey that is bigger than today. Yes. Uh, little did we actually realize that uh, how much we will actually have to transform. Right. You know, I think uh, many times my, uh, you know, my wife asked me, did you never ever think of working from home as part of your transformation journey? And did you ever not think of working with correspondents or with some amazing writers and actually just doing a curation, a compilation, uh, kind of a, you know, aggregation of awesome content as part of your, you know, um, strategy rather than, you know, just going with the old way of holding on to, you know, some of the uh, best talents, but at the same time, um, also when the when the when the media landscape is changing so dramatically did you ever not consider even paying a king's ransom for a good article but also not necessarily burden yourself with uh, manpower yes um, frankly i don't think that thought ever crossed my mind and uh, i can clearly say that uh, you know we can talk till kingdom come about transformation yes. without actually understanding what it means. Yes. And but, a life changing event such as, uh, you know, whatever has been happening in the last one, one and a half months uh, can actually make you introspect and look towards true transformation, which mm -hmm. probably is where we are right now. Yes. Uh, while I, I say this, I'm sorry, KP, maybe I'm not allowing you to ask questions. No, 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 that's fine. Oh, that's that's fine. I thought I should also make an observation. I, I, I remember and I recall your sending me your uh, blog, um, your audio blog about three weeks back about, you know, how publishers are scrambling at this point of time and, you know, everybody is trying to either go in for pay cards or going in for, you know, uh, you know, layoffs or probably firing people and things like that. Um, I think as an industry, uh, we have enjoyed the best of times without necessarily knowing that they were the best of times. Right. Uh, when we were in the peak of things. Right. And I think as an industry, we have we are so used to complaining even in the best of times that it has truly become you know the story of uh, you know uh, the wolves right the pulivara the pulivara the kadai right so we keep saying it all the time and we keep you know you know dissing everything that happens to us and we want to always you know uh, talk like as if there is no tomorrow but when it really comes to a situation when there seems like Tomorrow is really a question mark. Yes. I think there is no sympathy left for us, right? I see. Hmm. Um, the point I wanted to, uh, I felt that you probably in your bias as a journalist might have left out in that particular uh, podcast yes. is that how much effort is the journalist really putting in to become future friendly? Correct. And how much is a journalist trying to put the customer in the heart of the equation? Right. Because somewhere I feel that we as publishers 
did not consider the customer at the heart of equations till about probably a few years ago right reality has been hitting us over the last few years and right. we have truly started saying that so what's happened is that anand vigadan you know when i i come from you know the family third generation when i joined the editor my father the editor yes. was really sitting on a pulpit he used to sermon every week with his editorial yeah and when he spoke people listened they really wanted to hear his voice through the editorial they really gave a lot of importance to his views and it seemed like those views really mattered yes but that was 30 years ago right right in right. 30 years the world has changed and changed and changed and changed again right right today the editor is no longer the edifice of the equation right whether we like it or not it is the customer the most finicky the most carefree the most uh difficult and the most probably annoying part of the puzzle yes unfortunately or fortunately for us if we do not put that gentleman or lady at the heart of everything that we do yes truly we do not deserve to belong correct we correct. cannot and we don't deserve to stay relevant yes you know let me ask you this question here which is yeah. uh, do you make a distinction now on this date between the plight of newspapers and the plight of magazines or do you make a distinction between the plight of uh, newspapers and you know multimedia organizations like you or do you think it's the same set of problems confronting all of you see i think tamil there is a saying verlakku thandu veekam you know the 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 hurt is always as big or as small as the finger right <laughs> so i don't think anybody is spared not the times of india of the world not the hindustan times of the world not the sun tvs of the world and definitely not the anand vigadans of the world right yes yeah. everybody has a problem from a different perspective for some people it is the growth for some people it is a profitability for some people it is the stock markets for some people it is survival so i think it is a question of who is scrambling for what rather than whether there is a problem right now has this affected everybody equally i will clearly say one thing more than any time in the past i yes. think from the single largest industrialist in the country to the pauper yes. everybody has been badly affected by this situation and the point is i mean this is this is the simplest thing to say the point is i think it is our response to stimulus at this point of time which is really going to help us understand the new normal right so whether we like it or not let us understand that there is a new normal right if right. in 94 years we have never not published our magazine for one month at a stretch Right. but 94 years we have had to do this necessarily 3 weeks we had to go off air and we had to come back then that is a starting point yes will my readers continue to buy and read and continue to patronize me was the first question that was running in my mind when we came back last week right and you know why that happens kp yes is because i am trying to reconnect and understand whether i am still relevant to my customer yes does my customer still need anand vigadan and junior vigadan and aval vigadan as go to products just the way he or she needed it 30 years back 20 years back 10 years back or one month ago because his and her needs 
and his and her aspirations have changed so rapidly that have i kept pace is the question which i am asking myself and what's the answer you have found well the good news is that even though we are on back on with reduced print orders hmm. there is an offtake and that offtake has happened at a speed which is commensurate to what was before super so the reduced print order has sold out now will we be able to get back to normalcy is this again so the second question comes to me you can call me paranoid but the second question comes to me is it only because they haven't seen the product in the last one month that they are just scrambling for it or is this going to be happening week on week i think that question will start unraveling in the next few weeks and hopefully once you know the lockdown is relaxed and come things come back to relatively the new normal then are we going to continue to stay relevant to them is a question which probably will get answered in the next 3 to 6 months no obviously you are a very unique product unlike newspapers or general news magazines mm-hmm. you are a very unique product and therefore perhaps i can see the reason why readers come back because there is no other commensurate offering uh, you know is that a fair fair conclusion to make uh okay so it is it, it will be I, i don't think i can be ozymandias here saying that there is no other commensurate product in tamil to my product i have my competition and i have to say that while as much as i would like to say that i am unique from competition competition is competition so all of us went off the market uh, by end of march and all of us came back to the market last week is that by yeah, agreement doing, is I'm that sorry? by agree is that by no, agreement no, 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 actually it was, it was very interesting i think basically all of us lost steam the moment there was no transport and public utilities that were capable and uh, the postal that stopped taking our magazines the moment the entire juggernaut of transport logistics support came to a grinding halt then you know the truth stared at us do we actually have it in us to spend to go and deliver the copy all across the state at a time during this lockdown when we don't even know whether people will come out and buy the product because unfortunately unlike newspapers magazines are more bought on stands rather than at delivered at homes yeah. subscription is important it's a significant part of our business but it is not the substantial part of our business right so right. we were doubtful even had we reached our copies you know you know spending through our nose and actually delivering it to the last mile would people actually come out right and then there was this unfortunate spread of uh, you know fake news where you know the whole thing that newspaper was carrying covid and all that bullshit so i'm sorry my forgive my friend no, no, that's very uh, good <laughs> i asked everybody that i could lay my hands on or i could call i asked them a simple question i said all of you are spending money hard earned cash you are taking out cash from your wallet giving it to your vendor you are getting your essentials you are getting change back from the vendor if that money doesn't carry the virus how can my paper carry the virus yes i tried you know putting over the rooftops yes and i said this is not making sense and this doesn't serve any purpose Yes. but i think the fake media actually the fake news and the social media actually got the better of us at that point in time so what happened even those who were otherwise expected to go deliver the copies home college students school students who would normally undertake this work as a part time their parents forbade them okay so let me let me ask you had a last me... minute distribution problem yeah. and then we said i said i will stop then i called my colleagues uh in the industry and they said we are also stopping with this week and then when we decided to come back it was on the day when the partial lockdown or the lockdown was meant to be partially lifted that was the 20th right. uh it seemed that all of us were thinking on the same line so all of us came back last week it wasn't a particular agreement of any sort but i guess everybody is reading it the same way 
Right, right. Let me, let me, since we are getting to the last part of this conversation, let me ask you some quick questions. Yeah. You know, Ananda Vigadan has been really first of the block in many ways in terms of using a paywall, you know, for its digital content and so on. Yeah. Uh, uh, what do you see as the future now for this kind of thing? Do you think everyone is going to embrace this? Is this going to work? I have been, I have been, uh, sorry for cutting you off. I have been shouting over the rooftops and I have been, you know, driving people crazy by asking my peer in the industry that you better go pay or else. Yes. And I must say that at this point of time, more than any time else, the kind of response that we have got for our subscription offerings and of course at this point of time we opened it out during the lockdown we opened it out completely right. we have seen more than a trebling or a quadrupling i must say of right. the kind of traffic that is coming on our site and we have also seen even though the um, uh, the, the time period for free consumption has not stopped we have seen people actually more than willing to make a payment. Right. So we have gone in with multiple offerings. We have from lifetime, you know, 9,999 right down to a monthly 99. Right. And yeah. we have people by the troves coming in and making subscription payments every day on right. our site, on our app and anywhere that's possible. And we have some extremely satisfied customers. So from right. that point of view, I would say if not now, when? You know, and I don't know, we've been doing this now for 15 years. So, you know, uh, I think if the industry moves in this direction, I think we would have learned a lesson. Right. Uh, but even now, if the industry is going to still say, no, 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 advertising revenue is more, you know, you know, is something that ought to be, you know, doubling up at this point of time, I think we would have lost the bus. As an industry, would have lost the bus. And everybody is going to benefit. Certainly, I am going to benefit if the industry moves big. Because right now, we are one of the you know outliers. And people think, still think twice. My conversion rates are still low. But if the industry moves into paywall, then you know the whole ball game may change. And it right. ought to change. Right. Do you, do you think, in, in a short answer, do you think the industry is paying the price for not doing so for all this time and just for chasing numbers very stupidly and blindly you think that is this is one of the reasons why we are here um, well let me let me put it this way um, i think every every industry leader every industry vertical has their own view of things um, reader revenue has never been considered a substantial part of revenues by most publications all over the world till about five years back. Right. And, you know, there are a f extremely few outliers like the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Financial Times, the Economist. You know, there are very few outliers who are out there in the millions of subscribers. Right. The average, you know, if you take even American publications which have gone pay, we are still talking about tens of thousands. Right. So it is not for everyone. And I don't think everybody has been able to get their act together. Right. So I don't blame my peer when they have been shirking from that model, thinking right. that what if I lose my traffic if I go pay, right? I have been stressing on freemium where you give some of your stuff. I mean, I could never charge for Reuters news, can I? Obviously. Right. But I have to charge for my op-ed or I have to charge for my, you know, opinion uh, from industry leaders or I have to charge for a perspective driven story, which has taken me three months to write. Right. Or, yes. uh, you know, so the point is, what do we do at what cost is the question here. So I don't think you can weigh everything by one standard. Right. I don't think newspapers are wrong in not having gone pay. But right. yes, newspapers have been wrong and other magazines have been wrong in not going pay even with their exclusive content. Right. Right. You see content can never go pay. 
but yeah. you know there has to be something that can go behind the paywall that calls for a lot of self belief and it calls for a lot of faith in your readers too so yes. customers again so it comes back to the question am i doing everything that i that it takes to keep my customer satisfied because today in the near future i do not see advertising you know hitting the roof anytime soon yeah. um, you know my postulate is simple um, i may be chastised by the rest of the industry for saying this chastised by the rest of the industry for saying this but the point is newspapers and magazines have been seen as costly medium for a very long time right. and now that costly medium tag is going to become even more um, substantiated because tv has been suffering in the last one and a half months and they are going to continue suffering probably for the next month or so till production comes back to normalcy and till the market comes back to normalcy and advertisers truly start spending again overall from an all india perspective advertiser spends are going to take a dip and when it takes a dip two things the advertisers will want they will want more bang for the buck and they will probably want you know a val- typical they will look for value proposition everywhere more right. bang for the buck it's very clear that tv is and will give them more bang for the buck simply because they have been the most suffer- suffocated and they are having to necessarily spend in order to bring up their ratings again and therefore they will need to go back to advertisers they don't care the per 10 second rate they will give you the deal that you want so in light of that i would see that tv growing in adex substantially faster this year while the whole adex portion of the pie comes down right. digital will gain because where you have stopped playing the bullets with your ak47 you will need sharp shooting and for sharp shooting digital still provides those answers right, right. you know so you you basically answered the question i want to ask at the cost of print unless print is going to reinvent the way we come out with the proposition which again is something that we as an organization have been huddling together for the last one month and we are trying to come with a completely new selling proposition to our customers right that's a very well uh, put uh, proposition really and i know it's a state secret but what are the three quick lessons you learned from this thing you know what are the three quick lessons i know you are not just in print you are also on television you do you know awards and events and so on you know, what <laughs> what really you know are the three lessons you learned in briefly okay one if um if you truly feel that you do not have you do not you cannot afford the uh, people that you have however good they are you know don't think twice before right sizing because we have been thinking a lot we have been right. doing little but we have been thinking a lot even without covid we ought to have been right sized about a year and a half ago but right. we have been thinking for too long so that is causing us a lot of problem today so right. covid has taught us don't think just do right, right. right. So that is one thing we learned second is how much ever you diversify the eggs in your basket there will always come a time when you still need to put your you know money behind something which is absolutely key so you know um, events as a vertical literally has evaporated tv has become a margin business even though tv is go- because tv again rates are going to get hammered so being in the tv business is not necessarily going to be remunerating right it is still doubling down on print in the last one month i have i i have never felt so strongly about print than i did in the last one month so you know uh nerle narumai veyil illam theriyum is something that we they would say in tamil which is yes. you understand the importance of the shade only when you step out into the sun we have understood the significance of print and we have doubled down and we have taken it upon ourselves whether or not the advertising revenue is going to come back to the bank we need to be able to double down with print and we need to be able to reengage with our customers on print big time for us to be able to make the journey into the digital future right 
and and then one last question before I let you go. You know, uh, I know that uh, you hold a premier position because of a number of reasons. But uh, what would your advice to your peers in the publishing industry, in newspapers and magazines be? What would your stellar advice be so that we don't see the end of print, but we actually see the rise of print once again? I sincerely believe that uh, uh, we have taken we. I'm talking about we as an organization, so I don't know if this applies to all my peer, but I can say we as an organization, we have never taken print more seriously than we are taking it today. And I believe that if we are able to focus on what the customer is looking for, and if we are truly able to create that product which is worth uh, buying and buying for, then we are still in business. So. Uh, I think that is really my biggest takeaway. And when I am going to do right sizing, I have told my leaders only one thing. I have said, don't start looking at the list and say, okay, I don't want these people. I don't want this person because he's not good enough. I would rather look today as a 94 year startup, 94 year old startup say that I want these people because I believe they will deliver value to my company to my organization to the brand and to our readers right. and only those people that will truly deliver and who believe that with us they can deliver need to stay with us right. it is not possible for us to eliminate who we don't want let us hold on to whom we want and let us make sure that we take our journey forward from here it is a new lease of life and we need to go the next 94 years Excellent. Let me ask you one more, one last question, <laughs> okay? Because I'm sure much of what you say will kind of uh, be quite dampening for journalists, you know, not just in Tamil, but also in English and other languages. So knowing what you know as a 94-year-old company, as a 94-year-old startup, and as someone who's gone through this with such articulation now, what do you think the new journalist or the existing journalist should do to mould himself for the future? Okay, so I think in many ways nothing has changed, KP. You know, if you if you have a willingness to listen, if you have the willingness to do your homework, if you are willing to dig out and get information that you need in order to write a great story, if you are in a position to passionately follow a lead and and make an amazing tale out of it, right? If you are willing to actually investigate and actually do the fact, fact finding and make sure that you are not just in the rhetoric space, but you are actually trying to make a point which is valid, I think those values have just not changed. What has changed is when I do all of this, I should also be tweeting from time to time, I should probably be posting little bits, little leads from time to time on Facebook. I should probably be engaging with my with my followers and my audiences a little more. I should also think of a story how this could pan out if it was a video or a maybe even a Netflix documentary for that matter. As I am creating that story, how do I create it for my audiences? who are consuming it in multiple media formats is how I should be looking at any story without losing the essence of journalism. Nothing has changed in journalism. Only the output formats and the process has slightly become more, uh, you know, interesting. Right. Well, Mr. Srinivasan, that was wonderful to hear. You know, you are clear and articulate about what the way forward is. And I thank you very much for joining me despite your extremely busy schedule. And I wish you the very best for the future and for Vigodan from here on. Thank you. Thank you, KP. And thank looking you. forward to catching up with you soon. Thank you so much.